get called for? Because there are two black guys sitting here meeting me? Yes, I did. Well, what did they do? What did they do? Did someone tell me what they did? They didn't do anything. I saw the entire thing. They didn't what did they do? Nothing. And the woman says, for paying customers, they didn't do anything. So, As you've seen at the beginning of this video, and as you've probably heard about all over the internet by now, on April 12th, 2018, two black men were arrested for trespassing within a Starbucks while waiting for a business associate of theirs to arrive. The business associate in question is the white guy in the video asking the police why the two black men are being arrested. The manager who called the police stated in the 911 call that the two men sat down and refused to buy anything or leave the premises. Hey, police, I'm 363. How may I help you? Hi, I have two gentlemen in my cafe that are refusing to make a purchase or leave. Um, I'm at the Starbucks at 18th and Spruce. All right, police, I'll be on as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye. That same manager later quit her job, presumably due to the blowback received from this event. On Twitter, Starbucks apologized for exercising their legal rights against non-customers trespassing on their private property. The CEO of Starbucks even made the rounds in the morning news, offering sincere apologies that one of his employees would dare assert their rights against a person of color. Philadelphia's police commissioner released a video in which he defended the legal actions of his officers. On Thursday, at about 4.40, uh, police received a 911 call for a disturbance and trespassing. Uh, when the police arrived, uh, they were met by Starbucks employees who said that two males were trespassing and had refused to leave the establishment. Uh, according to employees, uh, they had seen these two males come in, they sat down, and after being seated, they decided that they needed to use the restroom. Uh, Starbucks said that according to their company policy, they do not allow non-paying uh, members or non-paying uh, people of the public to come in and, and use the restroom. And so they then asked these two males to leave. These two males refused to leave, uh, and the police were called. Now, when the police were summoned to the scene, uh, they get there, and they get this story that I just began to outline. Uh, they then approach the males. They ask the males to leave because they're being uh, asked to leave by Starbucks uh, employees. Uh, in fact, in an effort to quell the situation, officers actually called for a supervisor so that it would not get out of hand, something that was a good decision. And three different occasions, the officers asked the males politely to leave the location because they were being asked to leave by employees because they were trespassing. Instead, the males continued to refuse as they had told the employees previously, and they told the officers that they were not leaving. When the call was initially made, the Starbucks employees had told the uh, males that they were going to call police, and they said, go ahead and call police. We don't care. So police get there, and they're confronted by the same type of attitude and repeatedly are told that they're not leaving. In fact, there is some alleged rhetoric about you don't know what you're doing. You're only a $45,000 a year employee or something to that regard. And so because these individuals refused to leave, because Starbucks actually called, the police did not just happen upon this event. They did not just walk into Starbucks to get coffee. They were called there for a service, and that service had to do with quelling a disturbance, a disturbance that had to do with trespassing. So I need to underscore the fact that these males were arrested. When they were arrested, they were taken out essentially without incident. There was no harm done to them. But after being transported to the police district in the area, uh, the officers, after processing paperwork, discovered that Starbucks no longer was interested in prosecuting. And so at that point, those males were released from custody. It is important to emphasize and underscore that these officers had legal standing to make this arrest. Again, they were called to the scene because employees said they were trespassing. It is important for me to say that, in short, these officers did absolutely nothing wrong. They followed policy, they did what they were supposed to do, they were professional in all their dealings with these gentlemen, and instead, they got the opposite back. I will say that as an African-American male, I am very aware of implicit bias. 
We are committed to fair and unbiased policing, and anything less than that will not be tolerated in this department. Let me be very clear. I own no stock in Starbucks. I just happen not to even ever frequent Starbucks. But I can tell you that there was a case involving one of our sergeants, probably a couple of years ago, who went to Starbucks in full uniform, and he was also denied access to the restroom. So they are at least consistent in their policy. But he ended up cucking too, and eventually apologized for infringing upon these poor black men's right to infringe upon the rights of others. These innocent victims later made an appearance on Good Morning America, telling their side of this heinous event. Dante, you both walk in, you get a table. Rashawn, how long was it before you asked to use the restroom? Uh, immediately, as soon as I walked in. And uh, she stated that they were for paying customers only, and I just left it at that, at that moment. And the response was, you have to buy something. Yes. Then you go and find Dante. You're at the table. What happened next? Um, we're at the table. We sit down. We're just talking amongst each other. Um, she then comes from around the register, asks, you know, walks up to us, asks if, uh, you know, she can help us with anything. Can we start with some drinks or water or something like that? You know, for when we have bottles of water with us, so, you know, we're fine. We're just waiting for a meeting. We'll be out really quick type thing. Um, and that was it. So approximately 4.35, you arrive for a 4.45 business meeting. According to 911 accounts, a call was placed at 4.37, approximately two minutes after you arrived to 911. What did you think when you saw police arrive, Dante? It can't be here for us. So when they do approach you, what do they say and how do you react? Well, initially, as um, soon as they approach us, they just say we have to leave. There was no question of, you know, was there a problem here between you guys and the manager? You know, what happened? When you were arrested, did they tell you what you were being arrested for? No, not at the time. We wasn't read any rights. Nothing. Just double lock, handcuffs behind our back and escorted out and put into a squat car. Well, the video has been viewed almost 11 million times, and, and part of it, Dante, you can see that you're talking to the police officer. What were you all saying to one another? I was just trying to, you know, process the situation to myself at the time, um, because I'm thinking about my family that I have, my community. So in that moment, I'm trying to process what's going on. They walk over and they say, you have to leave. I say. We're here for a meeting. What is the business meeting about? It's a real estate meeting. Okay. We've been working on this for months. What, what do you say to some people who say rules are rules, that Starbucks has a policy, you viol violated that policy, the police asked you repeatedly to leave and you didn't. How do you respond to people who say that? What I say is I understand that. Rules are rules, but what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And that's in any situation, whether it's race involved anything. Everybody involved in this story, from Starbucks to the police to the media to the verified armbands to those two young men themselves, are acting like these two don't have any personal agency. They're acting like when black people misbehave in public, they aren't responsible for their own actions, and therefore punishing them for those actions is unjust. It's almost like they equate black people to unruly children that need disciplining by their parents. And when the police chief or the Starbucks CEO come out and say that it's their fault this happened, not the two men in question, it's like a parent apologizing to a shopkeep that their child broke a vase or something. There's only one word for considering an entire race of people to lack agency in this manner. Racism. And the worst part about it is, there actually are instances in the United States in which black people are unjustly removed from establishments solely because of their race. And these legitimate instances of racism are routinely overshadowed or underreported in comparison to the Starbucks-styled shenaniganery. For example, let's look at this LA Fitness in New Jersey. On April 16th, 2018, two black men went to the gym together. One was a member with a membership ID, the other had purchased a four-day guest pass. After signing in and beginning to work out, an LA Fitness employee approached them and told them that they needed to pay. After explaining that they had both already paid and signed in properly, the police were called. One of the black men recorded four short videos of the event. LA Fitness Sea Caucus. Uh, I've been having multiple problems with this club. I got my membership right here. I scanned in. I was asked to scan in again for no reason. I'm the only person in the gym they asked to scan again. And I have my membership. I've been a member here for at least eight years. We got the cops here. We got the police here. Excuse me, what's your name? Uh, Dan 
Right. Wait, just, it, don't, it don't matter. They don't, they don't know who you are. All right, here. Go ahead, scan it. I told you I scanned it with your manager, with your manager right? Go ahead, scan that. Let me call the police for this. Police right here. What, what that say on screen? Have a nice day. Can we go work out now? Have a very nice day. Only for the sea caucus again. Only for the sea caucus again. Okay, Dude, you're not allowed. Up. You're not allowed to film. Let's it. put that away. Why not? Let's put that away. Okay, now we definitely. Let's figure this out. All right. I, I do want to figure out. We, we're we gonna get all the contract. police officers here for, for what reason? We're just we're just here, man. I'm not gonna take your face. We've been having we've been having problems with the staff for months now. Several people, not just me. You got several emails from corporate about this stuff. I get it. You guys don't like cell phones. I get it. But it's not criminal activity. Exactly. Just like, just like you kicking me out the gym for no reason. That's helping you, Paul. Just like you kicking me out the gym for no reason. Ridiculous, man. Working out by myself. And, and this lady, too. For no reason. For no reason. Are you with anybody? I didn't do anything with anybody. And we're the only two black people in the gym. Let's, let's make this a black thing. We're only two black people in the gym. Only two black people in the gym. Been having problems with this staff for months over nothing. Every time something new. So, yeah, I, for you, sir, 100% call for it, bro. Absolutely. My contract is being terminated. Contract is being terminated because, um, because what? Because what? I don't have the answers. No, no, nobody, nobody knows. knows. Nobody knows my contract is being terminated. The manager, the, the manager doesn't like me, so my so contract is being terminated. We're gonna write the case on down for you that we came here for. What? Absolutely, no problem. Now, to be fair, gyms generally forbid taking pictures or recording video inside the building, mainly for the privacy of their customers. And that's their right, it's their private property. But if that was their justification for calling the police, revoking the legitimate membership of an eight-year-long customer, and banning them both from the gym, it's not exactly a good reason, because he only began filming after the police arrived. So what was the reason? We already know that the claim the two men hadn't paid was invalid. Could it have been just plain old racism? It's looking likely. And for anybody who thinks that we live in a white supremacist society, in this case of actual racism, the manager of the LA Fitness and the two employees involved have been fired, and the victim's membership has been restored. So we've got two very similar situations, both involving black men getting kicked out from privately owned businesses. The Starbucks one was legitimate. The men weren't customers, they were instead trespassers, and the media jumped all over it. The LA Fitness one happened at around the same time, with a very similar structure of events, and a similar demographic of people involved in all positions. But it involved an actual instance of racism, and the media ignored it. Why? Why'd one video go viral but not the other? Maybe it's because Starbucks is a more well-known brand than LA Fitness, and therefore the verification squad could extract more sympathy clicks from the story. Maybe it's because Starbucks is already hipster soy boy mecca, where these ideas naturally have fertile ground. Maybe it's because gyms are generally avoided by the radical left, due to a combination of low testosterone levels and fat oppression theory. Or maybe it's because ultimately the media is more interested in fabricated and controlled stories of fake racism than actual racism. Maybe it's because the wells of money, outrage, and viewers are more easily exploited when the narrative can be controlled, when the villains are willing to play ball by kowtowing themselves to social justice principles, and the heroes are just good boys going to college never done nothing wrong. There's a strong strand of belligerence within the black subculture in America. And I'm not saying that's a universally bad thing. I think people have not only a moral right, but a moral obligation to rebel against tyranny. But was Starbucks acting in a tyrannical manner when they asked two people that refused to buy anything to leave? If you think they were, it's likely because you don't respect the property rights of Starbucks. And that actually makes a fair amount of sense, given the people who protested this event. But there's a gigantic gap between the moral obligation to rebel against tyranny and the amount of belligerence within America's black subculture. I mean, look at it from this point of view. Let's say you're one of these two black men. You arrive in Starbucks for a meeting to be held in 10 minutes time. The meeting is, as they themselves described, a real estate meeting that will change your life. A manager comes over and says, you need to buy something or leave. Why wouldn't you just buy a coffee? Why would you just simply be belligerent, both to the manager and to the officers that arrived in the scene? Why jeopardize everything? Some people have already made up their minds about this. They did it because the whole thing is fake news. It's a false flag operation. It was set up by the SJWs to make Starbucks look racist. Or it was set up by Starbucks so they can show how progressive they are, or whatever. There's no evidence for any of this, and these theories are honestly a little bit out there. I have no evidence for my theory, either. It's just a hunch. 
but I think it's because the subculture these guys were raised in is one in which belligerence, whether or not it's justified, is used as a currency in place of wealth or attractiveness. We're going down the rabbit hole here a little bit, but that's okay. The black population of the US is around 13%. Despite this, black people commit significantly more than their share of crime. They commit 51% of America's murders, 30% of America's rapes, 56% of its robberies, 33% of its aggravated assaults, and the list goes on. Overall, 28% of people arrested in the United States are black. All of these numbers are huge overrepresentations from the 13% black population. Some people would say it's because of racism, that they're more likely to arrest black people for things that they let white people off with a warning, that they're more likely to over-police black neighborhoods, and even that they're more likely to simply fabricate cases against innocent black people. I'm not saying this doesn't happen, clearly there are instances of police brutality in the states. But a hundred years ago, Chinese communities had huge problems with the police, on par with the black community, and now they don't. Jewish communities had huge problems with the police, and now they don't. Italian communities had massive problems with the police, and now they don't. Nowadays, Latino communities have huge problems with the police, but still not nearly as large as black communities, despite the cultural stereotype of the illegal immigrant Mexican cartel member. If America is a white supremacy, and every single one of these statistics is explained by racism, why is it that of all the immigrant communities, it's only the black community that isn't getting any better over time? The alt-right will say it's genetics. The alt-right is stupid. I personally think it's the subculture of belligerence. 32% of all black families with children live below the poverty line, and 58% of black children don't live with their biological fathers. The black community is extremely impoverished, and in the absence of money, belligerence becomes the de facto social currency. This poverty is compounded by a lack of a stable home life, a lack of a father figure, and a lack of resources and money that a second parent would provide. And in the absence of any other resource, the only form of advancement left to these kids is belligerence. Be the meanest, baddest dude around, so nobody would would dare fuck with you. And eventually, that belligerence escalates into violence, it escalates into crime, it escalates into gang membership, it escalates into all the things that we see black adults overrepresented in. It's clear to me that what would help the poorest of black people is a stable nuclear family situation. Even if these families lived in grinding poverty, the addition of a second adult to the mix means a second income, a second pair of hands to deal with raising kids, and a second perspective on problems that may arise. So now we have to ask, why aren't black men making an effort to keep the families that they start intact? I don't know the answer to this one. Maybe it's because feminism's advocation for the destruction of the nuclear family has actually come to pass in the black community with devastating intergenerational consequences. Maybe it's because the echoes of slavery are still at play culturally, where black slaves didn't care about their kids since those kids would just be sold off by their masters. And that attitude stuck around culturally in a diminished form. Maybe it's because the black men of today were raised in the exact type of dysfunctional household that they're creating, and simply don't know anything other than having kids with women that they're not interested in building a family with. What I do know is that this problem can only be solved by black people. It can only be solved by black people making responsible choices about their lives, and not blaming the government or whitey or anybody else for the mistakes they make. I don't know if there's any impoverished poor black kids listening to this, there probably isn't. But just in case there is, it doesn't matter if your friends think you're white on the inside or not acting black enough if you'd rather study or practice instead of fool around. It doesn't matter if your family thinks it's a betrayal to them or your people or whatever if you'd rather leave the ghetto instead of live there your entire life. They're saying that shit because they don't want you to get better. They want you to stick around in the hood with them because you're a part of their social capital. If you go, they're losing a resource, not a person. If the choice is to listen to the belligerence of black subculture or improve your lives, well, I know which one I'd pick. We're way off topic here, and I know a lot of this is just me shooting the shit, but I really think that the belligerence of black subculture is what caused this entire Starbucks mess, on some level. These two young men probably walked into the cafe with an attitude of entitlement. The rules didn't apply to them, and they'd tell anybody who challenged them on this to fuck off. Why not? It's worked for them before. Oh shit, it's not working for them now, it must be racism, right? And the worst part is, people who accurately understand all of this, the black prevalence of crime, black poverty and fatherlessness, and so on, and then use this information to assume that all black people are gonna be a problem anytime they encounter one, are actually racists, which is likely what happened at the LA Fitness. We can use this information to understand probably, why Rashawn Nelson and Dante Robinson acted as contrarian as they did in the Starbucks after the fact. But we cannot use it to assume that any random black person will be contrarian in the future. That's the difference between the social justice definition of racism and racism in the real world. Sorry about not having the How Cucked Is Canada Part 3 video up yet, guys. I'm covering Canadian universities this time, and as you can imagine, it's a far bigger task than I initially thought. Hopefully this video will be enough to tide you over. Also, I'm planning on doing a Dumping with Scrump live on this coming Monday for Dankula's Conviction. I hope to see you guys there. I love you.